have Lincoln County Commissioner Jerry Bennett. Mr. Peck was uh, supposed to be here tonight, and he conveniently went out of town, so uh, he called, and uh, he, he must have forgot, because he called Kim about 15 minutes ago and wondered what she was doing and what was going on, so he must be having a good time, so uh, just wanted to share a few things uh, from the county. Uh, it really has been a pleasure uh, working with Mark Peck and Josh Ledger and Mike Cole before Josh and um, we've uh, accomplished a lot with uh, a lot of help from many people in the community here over the last three years um, we were at a state where we were kind of bleeding to death uh, we had at one time 23 million dollars in a savings account road fund and we that had dwindled to 14 million dollars and so we've uh, with the help of Darren Coldwell, uh, been pretty creative over the last three years, and we actually uh, have stopped the bleeding. We've cut a million and a half dollars in spending, and we actually had a balanced budget this year. So uh, things are are looking up, um, and uh, it's just a, a pleasure to to serve in Lincoln County. Um, we do have a few things on the horizon, and that's why I wanted to come tonight. Uh, you know, Lincoln County is only one of two counties in the state of Montana that doesn't levy for road maintenance. And uh, so far, we've been able to maintain the roads. We maintain about 520 miles uh, between the three road districts, um, winter and summer. Um, but what that means is there's no tax dollars going to maintaining the road. So as long as we can continue to manage finances, we, uh, we have no intention of uh, levying, levying for those road funds. But at some point, we have to be aware of that. Uh, potholes we can live with, but uh, having no roads at all is, is pretty difficult. So. Um, that's just one of the things on the horizon. Um, why I really wanted to speak tonight was just talking about volunteerism, not only in Lincoln County, but uh, across the nation. And, uh, you know, it is a different time, and uh, we're finding difficulty in many things. And uh, when you look at how volunteers have underwritten many of the things that we do uh, in Lincoln County, it's been pretty incredible over the years. Uh, but what we're looking at now, um, I've been speaking with a gentleman out of Minnesota. Um, we're looking at doing a countywide assessment of our EMS <coughs> program. Um, right now, Libby has 16 volunteers uh, for the ambulance service at one time we had 50. Um, Troy has 15 and Eureka has 15. I was reading an article the other day that said uh, when those uh, EMS uh, groups uh, drop to 14 personnel, um, it becomes a, a critical point. You can no longer do 24 seven um, of the system. So what that means to you and I is we have an expectation when we call um, 911 that somebody's going to be there. But when you drop below 14 volunteers, we can no long, longer cover every shift. And uh, part of that is transports uh, from the hospital. Um, to take a helicopter flight, uh, from Libby to Kalispell is about $28,000. Um, and that's just, for many people, just not doable. Um, and so, along with our weather, uh, you know, it becomes a very critical thing at, at the moment. So, by doing this countywide assessment, we will see where we're at 
and maybe plan a path forward rather than waiting till things crumble and then when you call 911 nobody shows up. So that's one of the big things uh, on the radar um, and it's I don't see it as a negative, I see it as a way for us to step out, figure it out and uh, you know continue with a, with a system that is equivalent to um, you know what we have currently. And uh, just to give you a basic idea, uh, this article I was reading for one ambulance and the attendance to do 24-7 costs about $330,000 a year. So you can see how much the volunteers underwrite that service. I mean, it's, it's borne out on their backs. And we as taxpayers, um, you know, right now, we have three ambulance services. So if you, you figure just one ambulance for those three services, a million dollars a year. Okay. Time? Sorry. Oh, I should have taken some notes. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, you know, I'll be around for a while. And if there's any questions now, I'd be happy to answer them. So. Scared you all. Thank you. Great night. Hi, Mr. Bennett. My name is Ann Frost, and I am a volunteer EMT. I transitioned from North Dakota to Montana a year ago. I am still in the process of trying to get uh, the paperwork through so I can work here as a volunteer, as an EMT. What's holding up my paperwork right now is I grew up in New Orleans, and I got my GED when I was 15, and I lost it in Katrina. So they want a 56-year-old person to, to come up with a high school diploma. And I have no one advocating for me. I have no help going through the system. It has been unbelievable what I've tried to go through to get my state registry. And I've been sitting in Troy for a year, could have been going on calls and can't because of that. So just heads up on that. That's something that maybe would be helpful for people that are trying to volunteer. Uh, thank you, and that's a good point. In the article I read, one of the things that is a deterrent is we don't have the same uh, from state to state as far as qualifications. Oh, so right. it, it makes it very difficult uh, to come from another state. It is. But my phone number is in the pamphlet. Um, give me a call. I'll be gone for a week, but give me a call when I get back. I'll be back the 20th. Okay. And uh, we'll see what we can do about that. So. I would appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, over the long haul, it looks like something's going to have, something's going to have to give on the EMT situation. Have you guys considered, really, seriously, um, tax, putting a, having some kind of a sales tax or some kind of a tax to, in order to keep and ensure that in the future, in the next year? Five, ten, twenty years, we have EMTs like other places that pay the EMTs, but I'm not going to be able to do that. But yeah, and that's yeah. that's been a part of the conversation. We really, this assessment is going to cost up to about sixty thousand dollars. So we're partnering with the hospital, and uh, you know we're hoping that through that. Um, we can determine a path forward, whether it be there are places that do a volunteer with a paid staff um, or a totally paid staff. Well, where so, do you consider the money is going to come from? Where well, it's a lot of money, and yeah. uh, you know that's why I'm bringing this forward. Uh, if we have expectations that we call 911 right. and somebody shows up we have to be willing to pay for that. Um, you know, uh, for years volunteers have handled that, but nationwide, we don't have the volunteerism that we had 30 years ago. So, so. what is your plan, supervisors? Do you have a plan on where? That's what the assessment's for, is to look through that, okay. see if we can develop a hybrid, or if we have to eventually look at a completely paid system. Um, Right now, we're still in good shape, um, but I don't want to wait till the house crumbles and try to rebuild it. So. Thank you. 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 Thank